Loktark, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it's time for another Orc Mode workout. And today was Max Effort Squat Day. But just a quick reminder for those of you who enjoy these videos, please remember to click like down below. Help keep the likes higher than the dislikes. We didn't do that last workout, so if you guys could reach down there and click that, it would be greatly appreciated. Alright, today was straight weight box squat with the cambered bar. Now, I can honestly say now that I've actually pushed this bar a little bit, it is more difficult than the other bars. It's more difficult than the straight bar or the, the buffalo bar. Uh, and I really had to test it a bit to see. Like my first time I used it and I got 505 with it the first time using it, I'm like, oh, I bet this is going to be easier. But then as I start adding weight to it, uh, yeah. Like this one wasn't bad. Like even when I did 495, it didn't feel bad. It's like it throws you off balance just a little bit, but it's not bad because it isn't past 90% really. Right, we haven't passed that 90% threshold up above it. Probably closer, that's probably right around 90%, I guess. Uh, so then when I made a jump, I went up, let me just put a full plate on over that. Put five plates on on the 85 pound bar, because that's what it's listed at by Titan. And when you pick it up, you know it, it's not a 45 pound bar. This was hard. This was an all out max, it was a little ugly. The bar pitched me back when I sat down. So I lost control of the eccentric the last couple inches right there. See that? And then as I drive up, I had to push forward because the bar pitches me back. So I had to actually lean forward. It's the opposite of, of what happens with a safety squat bar. It pulls you the other direction. That was a grinder. That was hard. Now, people would say, well, where did you feel that? My hamstrings and my low back. Okay. Um, it didn't really hammer my upper back that hard, but all those good mornings could be helping. But my low back felt a lot of work, a lot of pressure. My hamstrings were throbbing. Like, my hamstrings were throbbing. Like, okay. But we know I need hamstring and hip and upper back. Now, low back is being worked pretty much to its limits every week. There's nothing I can do to, to improve that. We just keep doing what I'm doing. Keep in mind, guys, I live on that reverse hyper. And, of course, stuff like this. So, people who are curious, again, um, I did the cambered bar, although I think on dynamic effort day, I'm going to switch bars for these this coming week. Because I've been pushing a lot of volume with this bar, and we do need to be aware of overuse. This is the second different workout I've managed to squeeze out all three sets of 20 with this weight. But um, I feel like I need to break it up a little bit. I'm thinking maybe I might throw some light chains over the buffalo bar and do it. Uh, next lower workout and then I can always do this one again on on the max effort day and maybe push push progression on it because I can get away with a little more volume on it. it it's hard to do any volume on these on dynamic day but what do we know we need to keep doing well upper back entire posterior chain um, hamstrings interestingly enough though felt like they were somewhat limiting me right I felt like that's why I struggle with that 535 just getting those hamstrings firing out of the bottom like I was pushing with everything I had now some people will say well what about quads well my quads look at the size of my quads and I do speed squats and all the sled drags my quads are not limiting me at this point in the game they just really aren't and if they were I could make my quads grow so fast so easily that it's not a big deal if they ever start limiting me I could probably in a month bring them up but they do get plenty of work. Believe me, those sled drags work your quads. The speed squats do also. So hamstrings really felt like it was limiting me here. I feel like hips and upper back limit me with other bars. Okay. But we're addressing all of that. How are we addressing that? Well, the glute ham raises hammer my hips. Hanging leg raises work my hip flexors a lot too. So I've started doing more and more hanging leg raises. All right. But as far as today goes, hamstrings, right? I just flat out need more hamstring. Um, and obviously low back because it felt fatigued, but we could argue upper back too. But notice that I had to lean forward because of the way the bar pitched me. And notice I just locked it out at the top. Why? Well, because I can do over 500 pounds with this bar on a good morning. Okay. That was only 20 pounds more than my good morning max with this barbell. So I was able to go ahead and finish with that. That's why we max on the good mornings. Today, upper back wasn't a limit. But again, different barbell. 
doesn't mean we don't keep hammering upper back. Upper back is going to be an ultra high priority for me. And by upper back, I'm talking about the whole shoulder girdle area. I'm talking about lats, but particularly the entire trapezius, the posterior delt, the rhomboids, the infraspinatus, all of that. Okay, it's going to be an ultra high priority for me. I'm going to throw a ton of volume at it. Because I don't have to do anything heavy with it other than stabilizing, we can get away with it. It's not like I'm doing work that makes those muscles move dynamically. So today I decided because I've been short stroking the reps a hair at the bottom on some of these, just because of the grip limitations, and people say, well, why, why does that matter? Because that last couple inches puts the most weight on the grip, right? Think of the angles involved, okay? Some of the weight goes to the heel at the top. So the lower you get, the more leverage there is pulling straight down. And I need to get the scapula protraction. So what I had to do today to get all of my 15s, I had to stop and regrip the bar. Mainly because my grip was giving out before my back and upper back was. I mean, these just crush my grip. As far as grip training goes, these with that shoulder width grip, because it's such a long range of motion that I have to pull against it for really high reps, my grip really gets challenged on these. This is probably my most important piece of grip training. Now, do I going to do other grip training? Yes. And something I had said, I think, like in yesterday's vlog or, or even the days before, I need to probably cut the shrugs out. I know the shrugs are good for my grip, but I can do other grip work. And why am I even doing shrugs for grip and to work my traps? Well, I don't need just my traps to grow. I need my whole upper back to grow. Shrugs really the best way to do that. Are they the best use of my recovery resources? Do I need the extra axial loading of a lot of weight pushing down, right? Not necessarily. I have so much axial loading work between the squats, deadlifts, and good mornings. Another reason I'm even doing higher reps on good mornings. Okay, I need to cut out all axial loading outside of those movements that I can. Why? I can do more training volume. And I'm not worried about my upper, my lower back not getting worked. I do heavy reverse hypers on both lower days and then all my off days for restoration, I do really high reps. And I mean 30 to 50 rep sets. So I try to get 150 reps a day total on the off days on it. All right, my lower back's getting plenty of work. I'm not worried about it not getting stronger. It's being hit for multiple rep ranges every single week with a ton of volume. It's getting worked. I don't need the extra compression on my spine. It's another reason I do these instead of rows. Okay, it's another reason I do those. But we need to do a, a little bit more body weight exercises in general. But I need to be thinking about that spinal compression. It's another reason I, I like I did the overhead presses yesterday. I'm like, mm, I'll cut them out. If I want more shoulders, I can just do more upright rows. Because I'm not worried about my front delts. All my pressing hits my front delts. And I think I'm going to throw flies in on some of my bench days just to make sure my chest gets extra work. Why? Because it's easy to recover from. It doesn't beat joints up. I'm already maxing on a bench every week. I'm already speed benching every week. I'm already doing floor presses for volume. I don't need the extra beating up on my wrists and elbows. I need to just build them teddies up. Well, even flies will hit front delts. So I don't really need that. I don't need the overhead work right now. Could I throw it back in if I want to specialize in it? Yeah, because you guys know my press gets real strong when I, when I work it. But back over to today's training, um, glute ham raises, three sets of 20. Now, does the form get a little ugly, I think, on the second and third set? Like right there, that 20th rep, you see just a little bit of that knee bend happening, because these are hard, especially, especially after doing those good mornings. You know, it's one thing when your hamstrings are fresh, but man, I had a max that I felt my hamstrings contract super hard on. Then we did 265 with good mornings for three sets of 20. Okay. A lot of hamstring work. But I know my hamstrings are a weak link. And you know, and interestingly enough here, I feel these do my hamstrings heavily and I feel my hip flexors massively on the glute ham raise. Therefore, I know it's working that for me personally. My hip flexors are a weak link on my box squats and my max squats when I use other barbells. Clearly not that cambered bar. 
well, I need to work that area. So I feel like for me, as far as my squatting goes, right now, uh, I feel like the glute ham raise and the hanging leg raises are, are really my go-tos other than all the upper back work. But the upper back work is a general weakness for me, right? It's a general weakness for me. Yes, it's, it's affecting my squat. I think it's affecting my bench, right? It's a lot of upper back and tricep focus, you know, and obviously some chest. That's what we need there. So we'll, we'll bring all that area up and that'll bring up my squatting. But the hip flexors, the hamstrings, because depending upon what squat I'm doing, this squat today, I felt my hamstrings really limiting me. Because of that bar, the way it pitches you, the hamstrings have to do so much work. Especially because of the way it pulled me back, like it pulled me backwards on the eccentric when that bar swings. And I had to come back off that box. Not only did that pull the hamstrings, the hamstrings were trying to fight against that. And then when they had to drive back off that box, hamstrings helped drive me off of it. Okay. So they need to be stronger for that. But those hip flexors and the upper back are really what limit me with the other bars. So again, this helps with that. This helps with both of those. Both the hips and the hamstrings. So I need to do it. And they were hard. Like this last set was tough. Like I was almost like, do I need to do another set? But I'm like, no, my hamstrings are shot. I'm like, I don't think I could really get away with another set today. I wouldn't finish it. Because look at me, man. I'm, I'm like working that, that those last couple reps. Like I'm having to cheat a little bit to get those. So what do we do today? More of the wide grip upright rows. I feel like these hammer my shoulders better than anything. They're easy to recover from. I can do them quickly with short breaks. And again, people who will argue the counterindication, that's why we don't go high. That's why we do a wide grip. That's why I'm trying to keep decent posture on them. Okay, upper back. So if I do five of the inverted rows and five of these every workout, that ends up being 20 sets of both a week or around 15 reps. That is an enormous amount of upper back and shoulder volume. It's enormous. I don't need to worry about my front delts. I can come in and do that both days. The upside, my forearms and grip are really fatigued from those axle bar rows. This almost feels like grip work because of the really wide grip and the way your hands have to hold it. This feels like extra grip work for me because I'm still fatigued from that. So again, we're, we're getting everything I wanted out of the shrugs plus a little bit more. Maybe not as much grip, but I can do extra grip training. But keeping in mind, 20 sets of those axle bar inverted rows every week, that's a lot of grip work. Keep in mind my speed pulls against uh, accommodating resistance. That's a lot of grip work. Now, I can always do a little more. It's my pinch blocks and stuff. But these really kind of address everything. And people are going to look at this and say, Jason, this is basically full body. Your lower days are full body. Yeah, my, my lower body days are working every muscle in my body other than my triceps and my pecs. And my triceps get ultra high priority. We're going to do over 10 sets for triceps on the main workouts. Not even counting my restoration work afterwards. So my triceps are going to get a ton of work. They're fine. They're lagging. They're still a weak body part for me. Okay. As far as my benching goes, my triceps are lagging. And I'm going to keep hammering them. I'm going to keep adding meat to those triceps. Because we're going to hit those different angles. We're going to hit different rep ranges. Okay. We'll rotate those movements. I'm going to make sure I completely and thoroughly train them every week to their, to their limits. And then I'll do restoration work to help them recover and to keep the tendons healthy. So triceps are going to continue to be a, a ultra high priority. But all this upper back work, okay? And, I mean, let's talk about having shoulder girdle as I continue to lose weight. Because I'm down to 219 now. You guys saw the way in. All right, I'll get down to 215 and assess. Let, let's be realistic here. I probably need to be lighter than 215. Okay, I'll probably keep going after 215 and slowly continue to slowly. And when I say slowly, we're talking like half a pound a week, guys. That's fine. That's fine with me. Because if I can continue to gain strength and muscle, I don't mind really slow fat loss. It's just going to be slow. And it's been working decently so far. 
So, you know, I'll get to 215 and I'll probably say, okay, 210. And then we'll, we'll turn to 210 and see if I can continue to recomp at that point and, you know, figure out what I'm going to do later for meats. But if I can walk around 210 or less, I have a lot of experience cutting water easily. I can do 198 later. If people are talking about, I mean, I have people who, who think that I'm in a heavy, really heavy weight class who are like, oh, your lifts aren't that good. I'm like, mm, my lifts are, some of them are kind of elite. My bench is the only thing that really lags. And it's not that terrible. I've hit 352. You know, I mean, I, in all honesty, 198 Masters 1 to hit 352 on a bench. That's not bad by any stretch, especially considering what my squat and deadlift are, though. Okay. Oh, no, I won't have the best bench. Doesn't matter. I'm totaling elite. But it doesn't mean we don't work on the bench. We know what we have to do to the bench. Keep working it. But, uh, I mean, realistically, I have more body fat I can afford to lose. I'll lose more body fat. So I probably won't even be doing 220 later. Okay. Uh, then we did my five sets of reverse hypers. My five sets of ten. These were hard today. Um, I just felt my low back really, really working hard on these. They were hard. It was working super hard. I think because it was so fatigued from that squat. Because the way it pitched me forward. And then all the good mornings. Like it was just tired. Like the, the 315 for 5 by 10 was hard. Especially trying to do them stricter. You know. And keeping in mind the way I do these. You guys notice I raise my head on every rep. So it's down and then we raise the head. And that helps again. Contract the low back more. But, uh, these were, again, these were hard today. But I think it's because I did so much other hamstring and low back work. Uh, but I got them. I got all of my reps. I got them. So at least that happened. But it was a tough, challenging workout. I would have liked to have gotten a better max on the squat. But that was a, technically a PR. And it's made me realize, yes, the cambered bar is harder than a normal bar. It's harder than my other bars, at least. Other than the safety bar. Hey, it, it's harder. It pitches you backwards. So, I mean, the fact that I got that 535 and was able to lock it was surprising to me. I was Because it was really hard coming up with that swing. It was really, really difficult. But I think what should, we saw there is that my ability to lock it after that, all those good mornings. Those good mornings are paying off. Um, but you guys can see there, obviously, I've definitely lost over 10 pounds of body fat since I started cutting. Um... And we have more to lose, you know. We're talking about being out of 210, that's at least another 9 more. And that's assuming I gain no muscle. I'm going to gain muscle. But good workout. Happy with it. So I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.